And my understanding is that in the early 2000s, you see this and you realize that actually doing that is a little bit difficult because what that researcher had to do is he had to sort of trick the GPUs into thinking that his problem was a graphics problem. That's exactly right. No, that's very good. Well, so you, you create- You did some research. So you create a way to make that a lot easier. That's right. Specifically, it's a platform called CUDA, which lets programmers tell the GPU what to do using programming languages that they already know, like C. And that's a big deal because it gives way more people easier access to all of this computing power. Could you explain what the vision was that led you to create CUDA? Partly uh, researchers uh, discovering it, partly internal uh, inspiration, and um, uh, and partly solving a problem. And you know, a lot of interesting interesting ideas come out of that soup. You know, some of it is is aspiration and inspiration. Some of it is just desperation. You know, and and so in in the case of CUDA, it was very much this the same way. And um, probably the first external ideas of using our GPUs for parallel processing emerged out of some interesting work in uh, medical imaging. A couple of researchers at Mass General were using it uh, to do uh, CT reconstruction. Hmm. They were using our graphics processors for that reason, and it inspired us. Meanwhile, the problem that we're trying to solve inside our company has to do with the fact that when you're trying to create these virtual worlds for video games, you would like it to be beautiful, but also dynamic. Water should flow like water and explosions should be like explosions. So there's particle physics you want to do, fluid dynamics you want to do. And uh, that is much harder to do if your pipeline is only able to do computer graphics. And so we have a natural reason to want to do it in, in the, the, the market that we were serving. 